Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio. In this series, we're headed toward a customizable shop system where you can walk up to a shopkeeper and buy or sell different types of goods, which will show up in your inventory. Each shopkeeper will have their own list of goods and prices so you can customize them and even change their prices throughout your game. In the last video, we set up our user interface, so now it's time to make some shopping lists and get our shops populated with items. Let's get started. So in our current setup, our shop panel has this item panel full of shop slots. If I double click on them, you can see they're currently invisible. Let's just go up to the canvas here where in our canvas group, we'll set the alpha to one so we can actually see what's going on here. You'll also notice that my gizmos are going a little crazy. I'm just gonna toggle those off so that all these text mesh pro objects aren't clogging up our screen. All right, now the first thing we wanna do is make it so that when we begin the game, each of these shop slots gets populated with the correct name, price, and item. To do this, we're going to need to write a C Sharp script. I'm going to head into my inventory and shops folder for this and create a new folder called shop. Here I'll make a new C Sharp script and call it shop slot. So here I'm just going to start by getting rid of the update and start method. And instead we're going to create a public void method called initialize. We're just going to call this as soon as the game begins and it's what will make it so that this slot populates the correct name, price and item image. Now to do this, we're gonna to have to create some variables up at the top. First, let's make a public item SO called item SO. Now next, we're gonna need a text mesh pro text reference, which we'll call item name text. It won't like that at first, so we'll have to add using TM pro namespace up top. We'll then add another text reference and just call this one price text. Finally, we wanna update the image. So we'll make a public image called item image here. And for it to like this, we're gonna to have to add the using unityengine.ui namespace so that we can access those UI elements. Now with that done, we're just gonna make one more variable here. This one will be a private integer called price. So at the start of the game, each shopkeeper will initialize all of their slots and it's gonna to have to pass in a scriptable object. So we'll do an item SO, new item SO, we'll call it, as well as the integer for the price of that item. At this point then we can populate all that data into this slot itself. So we'll make this slots item SO equal to the new one. We'll make this slots item image and specifically the sprite on that image component we want to make equal to the scriptable objects icon. Keep in mind as we're doing this that we're just accessing all of the data in our item scriptable object which has things like the item icon, the name of the item and that sort of thing. So we'll also make it so that our items name text, the text on that text mesh pro is actually just equal to the name of the item. And finally, we're gonna make it so that this price is equal to the price we're passing in. Finally, we'll just use that price and make it so that the price text is actually set to be equal to that. Though of course, text and integers don't play nicely. So we're just gonna add the to string function here so that it converts that integer into a string so that our text can understand what it's looking at. Back in Unity, we'll just click on one of those shop slots and open up the prefab for editing. Here, we can add the shop slot script and now we're just gonna drag things in. We'll take the item name text mesh pro and put it on the item name text. We'll do price in the price text spot and finally grab that item icon and drag that into item image here. We won't have an item scriptable object yet as it will be getting that at runtime. With that done, we can back out and you can see that now because it was a prefab, all the other copies of this prefab will also have all that data. Okay, with that done, we're ready to get our next script which is gonna be the shop manager. This will be the last script of the day and it's gonna be the one that actually allows all of our shop stuff to work. It will populate the slots and also run the buying and selling. Once again, we'll get rid of the start and update methods. Now we're gonna make a serialized field. This is just gonna be a private list of shop items, which we'll call shop items. Now our script isn't gonna like that and that's because shop items isn't actually a thing in Unity. So we're gonna do something a little different here. We're gonna come down below the curly brackets for this entire script and we're gonna go system serializable. This just accesses the system namespace and allows us to serialize this so that we can see it in Unity. But essentially we're gonna make a new class. This will be a class called shop items. And it's just gonna hold two pieces of data, an item scriptable object, first of all, and then it's also gonna hold a price. Now, just to show you how that works, let's pop back into Unity, go to our shop panel, and here we're gonna add the shop manager script. Now you'll notice here now that there's a drop down menu of shop items. And essentially these are just pairs. It allows us to drag in an item, whichever scriptable object we wanna sell. Let's throw a mushroom in there and set the price. 
We can make this different for every single shopkeeper in our game as we like, allowing us to have very different lists of shop items as well as different prices if we want for different items. All right, then now that we've got shop slots that are capable of being populated with images and text, and we've also got a list of shopping items, we just need them to talk to each other. So let's set up our shop manager so that it has a serialized private array of shop slots, and we'll just call those shop slots. Now here I'm using an array instead of a list. That's just because lists are more dynamic and you can change their size while you're running your game, whereas arrays are a little more rigid. That said, arrays are really easy to use in the inspector, which is why we're using one here. Now that I've got this, I can click on my shop panel and actually I'm just going to lock the inspector so that it doesn't close on us. And now we can shift click all of these shop slots and drag them into that shop slot spot there. Now we've got all eight slots here so that our manager is capable of now talking and sending information to all eight. All right, now that they can talk to each other, let's make that conversation happen. So in the shop manager, let's make a public void method called populate shop items. Here I'm going to create a for loop and in most IDEs you can just type for and then double tap tab to generate all this syntax. Now what we want to do here is loop through all of the items on our shopping list. So We'll start with an integer at zero, meaning the first item, and it'll just keep going until that number reaches the total count of our shop items. We're also just going to check that we aren't trying to put items in when we don't have enough slots. So if I run out of shop slots, it'll stop trying to populate slots. All right, so first thing we're going to do is just get that first item that we're trying to put into a slot. To do this, we'll make a local variable of type shop items. Let's just call it shop item. And here it will change each time through the loop, so it will be shop item first of all zero, then one, two, three, going up each time we go through this loop. Now what we want to do is look at the shop slot that corresponds with that item. So the first time through, we'll look at shop slot zero, and we'll tell it that it needs to initialize itself. To do that, we just have to tell it what item we're looking at, which is going to be shop item dot item so, and we also need to tell it the price which will be shop item dot price. And here we're just drawing from that serializable class that we made earlier. Next, we just want to make sure that these slots are actually turned on. So we'll talk to the same shop slot and just tell it to set active true. Though keep in mind that a slot can't actually be set active, so we have to get its game object and set that active. Now we also want to turn off all of the slots that we're not using. So if there's only three items in the list, we want the other five to turn off. To do that, we're going to make another loop, and this time though, I won't start at zero. Instead, our integer is actually going to stop at the count of shop items. So if there's only three items, that's where we're going to start looking. We'll continue to do this loop now until i, which started at whatever the number of items we have, hits the end of our shop slots array. So it'll just look at all the ones that are remaining, and essentially for each of those, we're just going to get its game object and then set it active false which will effectively turn it off. At this point, we're very nearly done, except that populate shop items isn't actually being called. Later on, we'll have our shopkeeper do this work, but since we haven't created him yet, let's just do it in start for now. So we'll just call populate shop items as soon as the game begins. There's no setup to do at this point. Just take a look here and in shop manager, I've put two items in my shopping list. And so when I start the game, those two items should be the only ones that appear in the inventory. And great, when I get in, there's the two items with the correct name and price, though you'll notice that mushroom doesn't quite fit. Let's do a quick fix here. We'll go to our shop slot. I'm going to open up that prefab. And if we go to the text mesh pro for name, here we can just head down and click auto size. This means it will try to do size 48 like we want. However, if it can't fit, it will automatically size down the text so that it fits in the space that we have. Now when I start the game, you can see that Mushroom fits just fine. All right, we've still got lots to do, but we're off to a good start here. In the next video, we'll look at how we can actually start buying and selling some of these items. Hope to see you in that video. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.